Bet you didn't think he'd be asked this question when he called into the show. Co-founder of 35 <laughs> Ventures and the business partner of one Kevin Durant, uh, Rich Kleiman. How are you, Rich? What's up, Staten Island? How you doing, guys? I'm doing just fine. Where are you? Again, you're in Long Island, right? You're Long Island? Right now I am in Long Island, no, yes. But originally, though. Where are you from originally? New York City, Manhattan. That's See, no, 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 no. Hold right on a right now. See, rich, 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 rich. You say New York City, it's Manhattan. If I say New York City, Staten Island, you say what? No, you're right. You, that's okay. why I, I quickly corrected and said Manhattan. Okay, no. <laughs> being that I'm on the phone with Shaolin's finest, which I <laughs> Okay, figured, thank you. Hey, look. It couldn't be inappropriate. Well, I got, ju- I, got, all into New York City. I got Judd Apatow on at the end of this hour. He's got a new sh- uh, new movie, The King of Staten Island. Um, and so, oh, with Pete Davidson, it, right? It's excellent. Is it? It is, Rich. I saw How it last night. How do you get night. these early screeners, man? Well, I get Judd Apatow to call into the show. I'm one of those hosts that doesn't, you know, just doesn't say, oh, yes, I've heard your movie's great. I say I've seen your film because mm. I prepare. I'm the Kevin Durant of broadcasting is basically what I'm saying to put it in your in your language, yep, Rich. I like it. Easy money, Eisen. <laughs> Now we're, now there you we're go. Talking. Now we're talking. Yeah. Rich Klein. Do you want to chime in on this poll question before we get to the the, the world at hand? Uh, it's you. Let me you, hear it, because I'm not going to lie and tell you I was listening. Okay. <laughs> well done, Rich. Go ahead, ask him. Hi, Rich. It's the 13th anniversary of the <laughs> nice. Sopranos finale. Please tell us you've seen it. Oh my God, everyone. Of That's course. What I'm talking yeah, about. Okay. So, did members only jacket guy kill Tony at the end or not? Oof. Well, let's let me ask a more holistic question oh, gosh. Um, of myself first. Okay. Am I happy with how they ended it? No. Right. Um, I would have liked some finality. Uh, finale. Finale. How do you say that? Finality. You got it. You'd like oh, some sort right. of closure. Closure. You want closure. You want closure. Closure. And I personally think that he should that he killed him. That's my thought process. Yeah. I think he did. Of course he did. Why else have they got six to eight seconds of silence? Well, so we got a, a dark screen. He's clearly saying this is over. That's it. It's over. And why did the show never come back in the movie? I mean, well, we lo- I mean, we, obviously rest in peace. Yes, At one indeed. point it was impossible when he passed away. But before that, there was no talk of anything. It's it over. There was over. O-V-E-R. Over. Done. Not even, not, even, not even any prequel, which everybody's doing prequels now. I mean, no it's prequel. It's over. a mob show. It's over. Okay. See, Rich and I are right. locked up. Right, yeah. Two riches right here. Rich Kleiman rich. here on the Rich Eisen Show. Here's my segue. Speaking of closure, so uh, no shot of Kevin Durant playing this year, huh? None? No. Why? Why not? Is he not ready? Does he not want to? What What, what can you – I mean, is he – Is he? It's just, you know, like you said, I mean, you talked about your preparation. You talked yes. about your mindset. And, you know, he – nobody is a bigger competitor than him, and you've right. seen that over the last 13 years. But – um, this is a, it's a shotgun season. It's, it's a lot of games in a short amount of time. It's, uh, it's very unknown and he has a, a clock on when his body was supposed to be right and ready to play, you know? So you got to stick to that plan. Okay. And, um, has he been told by anyone with a medical degree that you run the risk? Um, even if, again, I, I imagine he'd be, he'd be back in some sort of training camp, um, by the end of a season, if the Nets do advance to a certain point, well, if the Nets advance, there's still not even a, a, a shot of him maybe showing up in Disney World in any way, shape, or form. What do you mean if they advance to like yeah, yeah, conference keep, finals? Or yeah, finals? yeah, yeah. They're still playing somehow in September. What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> oh, my, I mean, I, 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 if I, if I could call Kevin, you want to? Yeah, I, I'd be more than happy to ask. But I'm asking you, what do you think? If they, if, if in the gym right now, can't even get him on the phone. Got it. I conference him, but I can't even get him on the phone right now. He's in the gym working out. Okay, so there's 0.0 full blue Tarski that he is playing in this current iteration of an NBA season. Oh, what blue Tarski? Yes. What's that? Have you never seen Animal House? Oh, I have, I have, but you know. I'm not going to lie, there's some voids in my, like, classic movie resume, okay. and I've seen it, but I okay. don't, I can't recite word for word like I could The Karate Kid. <sighs> I can't recite word for word the way I could Goodfellas. So I've seen it, but I don't know Blutowski. <laughs> you put it, so Dean, Dean Worms or... Dean Wormer. Dean, well, what oh, Dean Wormer, what's right, Worms or... At any rate, long story short, you put The Karate Kid up there with Animal House, it's, it's, it's a little jarring, but we can move past it. Um, well, no. 
what I did was I just leaned on like the first movie I could think of that I could go like word for word on. And okay. I'm not putting him in the same category, but okay. I think when the dust settles, yes. like it's gener- it's a little maybe it's more my generation. I'm not aging you because you're probably what a year or two older than I'm me. I'm 50. We talked about this last time. Yeah, I know you're you're in your early 40s, right? Yeah. So Animal House, like I was I was a kid, kid. I saw it, but okay. like. Right. Didn't connect with me like that. <laughs> Rich Kleiman here, co-founder of 35 Ventures, business partner of Kevin Durant. So what what do you hear about the return uh, of the NBA as we're sitting here on June the 10th? This is a this is going to be attempted, we all know, but how likely would you say this is going to be that there will be I mean, a finish? I feel like it's likely. I think that the NBA is um, as diligent and a prepared league and organization as there is. Adam, obviously, we all know, has been able to lead the NBA through ups and downs and always does it with grace. And you don't think he's going to make a decision without covering every angle and seeing everything twice. And um, I don't think you announce that unless you're fully intent on going ahead with it. And, and I think it makes sense. And then you see the MLS is going to be there before them, which I think is probably a good exercise for mm-hmm. the location um, and just to see how the league operates there. But I expect them to fully be there. And um, and what are you hearing about what players will be allowed to do once there? What are you hearing I, you know, about I the protocols? Really don't know. I've only read what I see. Like okay. I only read what Woj wrote about. Like if they leave, got to come back and be quarantined. But you know, because I only work with Kevin, I mean, I speak to other guys, but I'm not in the middle of this time in our world getting in their business on their return to play. But. It's never been something I've really thought about or tried to factor in just because Kevin wasn't doing it. Okay, so the the conversations you may have with people in Kevin's orbit or uh, stratosphere of player or anybody that you've spoken to, would you say that the players are lockstep and saying, yes, let's go to Disney World, let's finish this thing up? Yeah, I mean, I think... I think like anything else in the world right now, it's always with this like qualifier is everyone wants to make sure that it's safe and secure. And, you know, there's a lot of things right now way more pressing than COVID and the return to play that's going on in our country. And I think that people's minds are occupied. But the NBA players, I would assume, want to be back, want to play, want to compete, want to be able to be any source of inspiration for our country. And it's needed right now. And I think that... um I think that the that the idea that there'd be an asterisk next to this in any way is silly to me. If anything, the asterisk it would represent that this season would be harder than any other season. You know, like an asterisk implies that you didn't have the, as tough a challenge or as tough a journey to get to the ultimate championship or somebody else was hurt or whatever. The season was cut short. In this case, there's more obstacles and challenges than ever before. So. I, I agree with you, Rich. I mean, shoot, 70% of the season's already been played. That's number one. Then there's a, a several months off, and then you then you have to show up in one spot uh, with all sorts of distractions. I mean, when I mean distractions, I'm not talking about Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. I'm talking about everything that you normally do to get ready for a game and play a game and try and win a championship is totally out the window. And that yeah. you, and that, and that you. I'm assuming some players are bringing family members, or some are leaving them home. Uh, I can't even imagine. I don't. I don't think there'd be an asterisk at all. I think it would be a wow. That was one of the most impressive championship seasons, and one that I hope uh, you know that we'll never forget, and hope one we will never have to attempt again. That's the way I right. hope they would go. You know. And I think that what's interesting about it is. So the season stopped to a halt, like March 13th or something. Yep. They're going to go back to play July 31st. That's five months. So let's just even say July 1st for when training camp starts. If you look at that as like a traditional off season, from year to year, there's teams that just come back and aren't the same team, or there's teams that come back and surprise you and are better than they were the previous year. So I think that storyline is going to be somewhat interesting. And teams that are younger, that have benefited from their home court, that may not have that advantage or won't have that advantage now. So I think it's going to be pretty exciting, and I think there'll be surprises. Obviously, the stars and the best teams are the stars and the best teams. But who? let me ask you guys a question. Who do you guys, like, is there someone that you think, is it LeBron? Is there someone that everyone unanimously wants to win this now? Is there a team you guys all want to see win this? Huh. Look at you, Rich, going on sports talk radio on us here. I, I, don't, I don't think so. Um, Our city, man. 
Rich from Manhattan. Oh, please. He's on the line. Oh, please. First time, long time. Um, yeah. Well, I don't First have. Time caller, long no, time I, 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 the New Yorker in me says, come on, let's get Durant out there. Rich. Yeah. I know you said that. Rich, you rich, rich from Manhattan. Um, <laughs> you know, Rich from Staten Island is like, come on, if the Nets advance, I want to see Durant. Um, <laughs> rich from Staten Island. Yeah. You know, long time listener. Uh, f- f- long time I'm host, long, long oh. time host, first time caller, literally first time. Well, actually, no, I have called into my own show. I think for um, me, it's yeah. like I want to see what the Bucks do. They've been the best team in the league this year. They've really dominated the East. Giannis is the clear MVP, and I want to see uh, if they can put it all together and, and take I'll, this one home. I want to see what the Clippers do too. You yeah, know, like I mean, this is Clippers. their best chance in such a long time, and then this all uh, occurs. You know, and yeah, co- I, mean, I think the Clippers benefit in some ways if you think about like Why is that? the home court advantage. Oh. I'm not saying that they don't have one, but it's not something we've necessarily like attributed to the Clippers. And one through ten, they're like veterans who have played on the big stage, who have won, who are fourth quarter players. I mean, they're loaded. But clear cut MVP, Giannis. Wow. So are you saying, Rich? Are you saying? Um that the there's really no clear cut home court advantage for the Clippers because uh, Durant once dropped uh, 50 and then turned to the fans and said, "Who do you think you know? Don't forget my name or something like that." Then you do something like that. Well, he, he looks, that was before the game. He's like that staring at Billy Crystal like, and he's staring at <laughs> Billy Crystal and uh, Jimmy Brooks and all those famous Clipper fans and he's like punking him. I think that's yeah, what he well, did. Well, I wouldn't say punking him and and I, I'm not saying the Clippers <laughs> don't have a home court advantage. He did put up. I think it was like 48, right? Or was it 50? I think it was. It yeah. was it was a yeah. great game. It's one of the all-time great performances. That's for darn you there? sure. He was. I mean, he was. I was not was, there. No, I was not. If I was there, there'd be a better home court advantage. You know. Wait, I'm, Rich. Who probably, do you think? probably would adapt it up to oh, like two riches yeah, from the borough? That's right. <laughs> Wait, Rich. Who do you think is MVP this year? Um, I don't know. I just don't know if it's clear cut. I mean, you know, I think that like. I think there's no way to say I have that conversation without having like a strong uh, LeBron argument to it. Um, so I, that was all it was. Clear cut is like runaway. There's been some runaways. I just didn't see it as a runaway. Yeah, I mean, LeBron was having a remarkable LeBron. Season. LeBron's also playing with another top five player. I mean, Giannis is playing with like the four of us. He's playing, is, is he really playing? I haven't seen Del Tufo suiting up for the Bucks recently. But <laughs> I mean, I'm ready wow. to go in, Coach. Wow, Put calling the rest of the Bucks, the four of us, I'll that's this, quite I'll something. Be, I'll be well, were you, and were you including me? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was, I was including you and then the three of us. <laughs> he <here>. was, in <laughs> fact, including you. Um, hey, Rich, uh, what, you, know, you mentioned the MLS going first um, in Orlando before the NBA. The NBA is going to go before the NFL. So much conversation talking about what is happening in our world with uh, protesting and the murder of George Floyd and murders of Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Arbery. Um, Any conversation about what NBA players might do to uh, have a form of protest at all? Uh, I don't have any, uh, I'm not privy to any of that, but what I'll say is, is like historically the NBA players have always been on the forefront of speaking out about being on the side of right, about advocating, and some of the most astute minds. I've always felt this way. I see it in business. I see it in philanthropy. I see it in social activism, and I expect nothing different, Um, especially because we're just living in a scary yet exciting time in that it feels like for the first time ever the line between right and wrong has truly been drawn. And, um, you know, and people can't really hide from that. And people are tired of it. And it takes a pandemic and, you know, uh, displeasure with federal government, all that kind of stuff for people to to start seeing it more clearly that weren't at the forefront of it. And, you know, I think it's the time now to keep hammering that message home because you got to keep doing this and keep doing this and making sure that the roles of people in power are changed. And I expect NBA players to, to uphold that because, like I said, nobody's as outspoken and and um, influential in those conversations as they are. Rich, I appreciate the call, man. Always enjoy our chats and catching too, up and, and all that yeah, stuff. I'm sorry I, I was late. I blew three good minutes we could have. You know, th- <laughs> that's like a, a half of a PTI segment, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. It's all good. Uh, I appreciate right, guys, you. I let's appreciate you calling. Who's playing what position with Giannis when we suit up? You yes. know? Okay. Well, well, I assume you're tall, Rich. What are you, what are you measuring at these days? Dude. I'm like six three, but I I have that like. You know, I like to model my game after one Mark Action Jackson, so I will be slow and methodical with how I bring the ball to court, but I'd like to run the one. Okay. 
All right. That sounds great. I will gladly play P.J. Tucker. I will stand in the corner and shoot threes Dude, all night long. P.J. Tucker, you're like J.R. Smith. You have no conscience. You're, all right, that's you're fair, like, too. Like, I'll that's go, totally I'll go fair. I'll go for 12 and then take the next 15 it's, shots. I'm okay with and that then, as well. And then I, forget I, that we're up against the break. And I know what the score the is at all times. Okay. I know what the score is at all oh, times. Oh, boy. <laughs> see what I'm dealing with right here, Rich. It's, it's all, see, look at that. Shooters shoot, man. That's, you're so, that's why you're so savvy. Let's just throw that out there and let us argue instead of me asking why Durant's not coming back, you know? I mean. Switched him up. All right, guys. <laughs> He's got to run. Take it easy, Rich. Take care, man. See you, It's Rich Kleiman. Follow him at Rich Kleiman on Twitter at 35 Ventures, at Boardroom as well for the 35 Ventures. Uh, he is co-founded with uh, Kevin Durant, and then the, the Boardroom's a, uh, a terrific show. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.